Any Small Goodness by Tony Johnston. Essential question. What can people do to help their communities? Arturo is a basketball fanatic, just like the rest of his family and everyone else in the barrio. He's a Spanish-speaking neighborhood in Los Angeles. He gets up at the crack of dawn nearly every morning to attend practice at his school. This day will be a little different. Our is a barrio of basketball maniacs. Our fans don't wear cheese hunks on their heads like some of those idiotas on TV, but they get pretty into the game. When the season approaches, like now, two worn shoes stop and start with no squeak, two soft balls loft through the air. The whole neighborhood starts dribbling and jumping around, like a great big popcorn machine. Guess that's another reason I signed up. Like the ad says, I love this game. Now we are in the gym waiting for coach. He comes late a lot because he wants to watch as a primitive as Sundial and a car that's easily Jurassic. I count on every one of your players, coach pounds into us again and again. I can't count on my watch. I can't count on my car. I've got to count on something. Everyone's about as zoomed out as me. So there is a spurt of talk now and then, but mostly pretty senseless mumblings. Some kids stretch out on the bleachers for extra Z's. Our school colors are orange and green. Our mascots, the tiger. What means on heads thought these things up? Tigers don't exist in that color combination. Tigers don't exist in LA. Anyway, dressed like peas and carrots, our basketball class waiting for coach again. Unbelievable! Coach strolls into the gym in a suite with a tie. Off to one side like a skinny wind flopped flag. He usually wears gray oversized sweaters that make him look like a melting elephant. Today he is dressed sharp. The reason standing beside him, seven foot plus, with the building of a post and bowed as a light bulb. An NBA basketball player on so famous, he made Santa Claus seem like a total unknown. He's been out of the game a while, but any true fan knows him. A. Hey, the day's shaping up. What I notice most about this guy is his eyes, like owls. It seems there are deep things in them, deep and mysterious. What's he doing lost among the tigers? He must have really veered off the road from Beverly Hills. Listen up, everybody, coach says, as if he needs to grab our attention. We are all gapping like apes. You all know who this is, right? His face looks completely satisfied. Like a cat who swelled an entire turkey. Man, do we know this guy? He's here, says coach, to hang out with us, watch our moves, instruct us, to be our assistant coach. Wow, at this news, it's amazing all the tigers don't zoom to the floor. But we don't. We are too stupefied. One thing, coach adds, nobody breathed his name. Understood? Our new assistant wants to remain anonymous to keep cameras from snooping around. Right now, nobody can breathe anything, but somehow guys pipe up with Joe Hurl, Scott's owner. Even though there are no Scots here, and I swear on the grave of my hamster. Then Coach Tree, my name for the Wandering All Star, steps forward and says, Buenos dias. That snaps the spell. The tigers can no longer control themselves. They totally swarm the guy. He hugs everyone and they hug him. 
and he laughs and laughs. At home, we are discussing this cold thing over the supper. Chili's rellenos, which mommy and abuelita prepare together. For this dish, you need poblano chilies, the black, green, glossy kind. Abuelita says you count the beans to pick the hottest ones. Some people prefer blend, but we want those strong enough to blow your head off. Once the skins are roasted and steamed off, you stuff the rest with meat or cheese and dunk them in flour. Then, with stiff coats of egg whites, they fry in oil floating like hot islands. Last touch, a drizzle of tomato sauce. To help out, I usually chop the onions wearing sky goggles that Abuelita and I got at a yard sale. So my tears don't dilute the sauce. One thing I know, if on my own, por lo menos, I could always fix chilies rellenos. Our whole family loves basketball, even Abuelita, probably even our cat who sits and always is skimping lamp to watch all games. Especially we love the Lakers. We know the names of all the players, their numbers, their stats. We are wild for their announcers, chickens too, and give the chance. We would vote chicken for president. My brothers both excited and skeptical about coach three, the burial interloper. Luis is three years older than me. Maybe that's why he's untrusting. His motive must be money, Luis says, studying his mango fork, a garbage deposit victim. But his eyes say no way can that be. The school district wish list has a focus on books, not on NBA coaches. Yeah, I say. Like we've got a gushing oil well at school to turn into dollars at will. Luis burns me a look, so I say. So cut my heart out and fry it for dinner. Everyone, including him, laughs at this Aztec humor. Papi finished his stuffed chili pepper. Ay, que delicia. He almost sings about how delicious it is. Instead, he exclaimed, you are such a good cook, my, mi vida. It's that mole runs in your veins. How happy mommy laughs and goes a little red. Then she grows serious and says, I believe this basketball man has all he will ever need. I believe he is doing this coaching for love only. That sends Luis's eyes spinning in his skull. I can nearly hear his brain grinning, love. Man, don't you know? The word goes on verde, the green of dollars, but he says nothing disrespectful. Neither do I. I plan to just dribble my brains loose while these guys here, to gain every possible tip. Maybe with buckets of sweat, I will become excelente at this game. Analyze the text. Hyperbole. In paragraph 4, Papi praised Mammy's cooking by saying that she has molly in her veins. What is the meaning of this phrase? Find another example of hyperbole on this page and explain what it means. Coach 3 arrives every morning just about before anyone. He slips into the parking lot in some anonymous car and slowly unfolds himself out. Like a giant and rusted puck knife, I say he is there before most everyone. Actually, at first, just about the whole school waiting for a glimpsing of him. He takes that easily, just strides along talking to crowding kids and smiling, like he's found himself a good home. From a distance where I'm watching this reception, looks like a tall, calm ship riding a choppy sea. 
The new basketball program affects everyone, not just the big kids. From kinder on up, anyone can play. Our school is so old kinder to wait. All grades are there, and they do play, if the ball doesn't bog them down. And even if it does, they just keep trying and trying. That's Coach Tree's real aim. Though everyone gets a shot at basketball against other school, it's the older kids who sweep up. I'm not old class, but somehow I make the team. For Coach Tree, the Tigers work like crazy. We don't have much height, but speed, we've got muchísimo, and we are okay shooters too. To say Coach Tree helps us a lot is the understatement of the millennium. No whistles, no yells, no having of chairs. From a steady practice and from his calm voice, the fundamentals sink in. Once between classes, he stops me in the hall. My nerves get tangled as a fistful of paper clips. You are working hard, Arturo, he says, quiet as ever. Doing good. Hi, like a one look from a girl, right for me, I can live on these words forever. Before long, we are actually winning some games. That's partly due to one guy, Jose. A natural, you could say. He can steam past all defenders, fake one way, starter step, elevate, shoot and switch. All day, all night, if he has to. Like breathing, Jose, he can flat play. Jose is a smooth player, but a real troublemaker. His family is a mess, so he bears a chip on his shoulder the size of a sequoia stump. He's been kicked out of school more times than there are numbers. He'd as soon spit on U.S. talk. Has Plato's fights for fun. Jose's a strong reason why we win. Still, for survival after practice, whatever he is, our team pretty much vacates the area. There is a sign on my door, non se aceptan chismes. But actually, in my room, I allow carloads of gossip. Chismes bloom at school too. Soon everyone knows that Coach Tree is losing things. A pen and handkerchief, a keychain, once even a tennis shoe. Next thing I heard, the cool prince Jose. Word is he's vending Coach Tree abilia to guys. Wow. Stealing from coach trees like stealing from God, my opinion. Jose's the undisputed king of the menzo heads. If it is true, we all expect that this is the last of him. He ought to depart the team fast, but after all, it must be a star invented for excitement because Jose keeps playing. Weird thing, though. Mucho muy strange. Sometimes he asks to shoot hoops with us. Sometimes he says hello. One night Alicia comes over to do homework and snack on Mexican cooking. Crunchy chicharrón with lime juice squeezed on. We go eat into guacamole while we are sort of studying. Analyze the text. Author's words choice. Why do you think the author includes Spanish words? How do they impact the meaning of the story? Sort of, because immediately concentration slips away. The air feels crackly as the pork winds. Like Alicia's got something to say. I mark my book with a tomato, the only thing around. From nowhere, she plunges in. Coach Tree caught Jose stealing his stuff. Yeah, I say, low key, to see where this is going. Yeah, and he is letting it slide. Mentirosa, she's got to be lying. 
Amazement must fill my face like the look of a stuffed deer. Well, not exactly letting it slide, she says. Coach Tracy is promising Jose. He's spending free time with him, making him practice ball, making him study. Coach Tree says he won't let him toss his life into the dumpster. So Coach Tree works with Jose one on one and let that think in. Think it, it'll work? I ask. Yeah, I do. Why? Because for the first time in forever, Jose trusts someone. After Alicia goes, I'm in my room thinking about Coach 3 and Jose. Coach doesn't have to do this. He's lost by choice in our nothing burial. Helping a kid with not many chances, even though he's a hard case. I have hope and if Alicia does, and she ought to know. Jose's her brother. My grandmother takes a decision. I prepare chilies relenos for this coach man. That said, there is no stopping her. I'm ordered to tell him, tell the ex NBA champ that the peppers will arrive today after school, along with my whole family, and they do, in a see-through tub, not my family, the chilies. Analyze the text. Theme. Coach 3 coaches Jose even though he knows Jose stole from him. What does this event say about the theme of this story? Coach 3 is waiting in the lunch court with a mob of curious kids when Abuelita gets there. Like a little broom, she sweeps right up and says, I'm happy to meet. You play basket real good. Chilis muy excelentes. Eat. Yes, man. He samples a chili relleno with Abuelita cheerfully breathing down his neck and prodding. Excelente? Excelente? Suddenly, Coach Tree is like some cartoon character, steam puffing from his ears, strangling out words and speech balloons. Ah! Ah! I say ah! To casting an airy stare at Buelita. She's brought the hottest chilies in the universe. Man, my basketball days are over. Probably my life's over. CPR, some kids shouts. What a menso head. There is no CPR for peppers. Abuelita turns away totally mortified. I take that back. She's giggling. We all hold our breath, then, Gracia Sonora, Excellentes, Coach Tree gasps, everyone loses it, Muriendo de la Risa, then Coach Tree wipes tears from his face and bows and shakes Abuelita's hand. He shakes hands with everybody in my family. He laughs and laughs, and over the haze of the hot black top, Carrying the leftover chili peppers, he walks to his car slowly, a tall ship of smoking calm. Luis right. I find out from Alicia Coach 3 is coaching for money. His relative teacher is here. So he said he would help out our school for the solid shattering price of one dollar. I know my limits. In pickup games I hold my own. But I'm not NBA bound. Still, maybe I could do something like Coach Tree. Something for love. Something that's mine. Though right now, I've got zero idea what. To use one of Puppy's favorite words, Coach Tree is a person to emulate. <laughs>